Format 31, I had a question coming out of section 8.1, number 9, and here we were asked to get this equation, which is right here, into standard form. And when you hear standard form, that would be x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equaling 1, or you might say x squared over b squared plus y squared over a squared equaling 1, uh, where we determine what is a or b, or really if the a squared term goes under the x variable or the y variable, it's just a squared is always the larger number. a squared is always larger than b squared. And that's how that works in uh, ellipses, which is what this section is. When you get into hyperbolas, which is in section 8.2, it's a slightly different format. Okay, so if we look at our original equation here, we have 4x squared plus 9y squared equaling 1. So the good news for us is that if you look at standard form, there's a 1 on the right side of the equation, and we already have a 1 on the right side of the equation. The, the bummer is that we want, let me change highlighter colors here, we want a fraction here, and we don't have a fraction, right? I want a fraction under the y squared, I don't have a fraction. And this now comes down to, hey, how can we turn multiplying by 4, right? Because I have 4 times x squared. How can I turn that into a fraction? Well, that would be equal to x squared divided by 1 fourth. All right, because if you remember, dividing by a fraction is like multiplying by its reciprocal. So this is equivalent to x squared times the reciprocal of 1 fourth, which is 4. So what I can do here now is I can say this is x squared divided by 1 fourth. And then similarly, oops, that looks like a squared term. Let me erase that. Similarly over here, I can mess with the 9 and say this is equal to y squared over 1 ninth. And that is equal to 1. So I can start to take a look at it that way. And, and it's no accident that 4 and 9 are perfect squares. So I could rewrite this as x squared over 1 half squared. And then y squared over 1 third squared is equal to 1. Because let me just do this on the side here. If you take 1 half squared, that is 1 half times 1 half. Multiply the numerators, multiply the denominators. You do get back to 1 fourth. And the same can be said for 1 third squared. It's 1 third times 1 third, which is equal to 1 ninth. So here we go. That's why you're seeing this formula right here. And just kind of extending this problem, in this case, A would be equal to 1 half, and B would be equal to 1 third. And I would decide that because 1 half is the larger of the two numbers. That's why it will get the A value. And between these two numbers, B is always the smaller number, which is one third, so that's why we're gonna get b being equal to one third. But that's how you get this equation all the way into standard form. All right, thanks so much, bye.